Hi, I'm Tammy and today I'm going to show you how to make this loose fitting gathered dress. The rear dress pattern goes from sizes 6 to 24. You can find the rear dress pattern on my Etsy shop which is linked in the description box. So we're going to start by placing the front lining on the front bodice with right sides together. We're going to pin around the armholes and neckline, leaving two gaps to insert the straps later. Pin and sew using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. This is what the front bodice should look like and you can see we've left two holes here and here. Now what we're going to want to do is put this to one side and do the exact same for the back bodice. So this is what the back bodice looks like. You can see we've left two gaps like we did for the front bodice and we've sewn along the armholes and neckline. Now we're going to take our straps. I decided to make mine longer and I cut out four straps as I wanted to make the tie version. We're going to fold the straps in half with right sides facing and pin along the edge. For a skinny style, I like to sew with a half an inch seam allowance. So I've sewn all four straps and I've sewed one end shut for the tie version. I like to cut the seam allowance at the top to reduce any bulk and all there's left to do now is turn the straps with a loop turner. You should now have two or four straps depending on the style. Press these for a nice and clean finish. Now with the front bodice we're going to take the strap with the end that is fraying and sandwich it in between the front and the lining where we left those two gaps. I like to pin this in place before I actually start stitching.
So this is what the front should look like and now we just have to do the exact same for the back bodice. Clip the v-neckline seam allowance so it's nice and sharp in the finished piece. It's also a good idea to cut the seam allowance smaller near the straps to reduce any bulk. Now we just need to open this out and pull the straps completely out and you can really see the top coming together. To achieve a neat finish, we need to understitch the seam allowance to the lining at the armholes and neckline. When you get to the straps, it will be hard to go all the way up, so you can stop here and here, as it will be impossible to stitch right to the edge of the strap. But how you do that is by making sure the seam allowance is facing the lining and stitching along this section here. So now we're going to take the right side of the front bodice and the right side of the back bodice facing each other and we're going to pin the bodice side seams together and flip the lining side seams up and pin together. This will look like one long seam where the lining is together at one end and the bodice fabric is together at the other end. Pin along the edge making sure not to catch the straps. Do the exact same for the other side. So as you can see I've sewn along this whole seam and I've cut the seam allowance a bit smaller so it's not as bulky. Now what we're going to do is pull the straps and give the top a good shake. Flip the lining back down and this is what the finished seam looks like.
To sew the skirt, what we need to do is grab the pieces and right sides together, we need to pin and sew down the side seams. So this is the finished side seams and the skirt edges sewn. Now we're going to mark the notches on the skirt like this. So basically mark the centre front and centre back. And we're going to do the exact same for the bodice. If you miss a section, just snip a little notch as a guide. We're going to need to run a line of gathering stitches all along the front. So just open up the skirt, start from this end and stop here. Start again here so you have two separate gathering stitches. So this is what it looks like. We're going to want to place the bodice inside the skirt with right sides facing. Match the side seams and pin and then pin and match the centre front and the centre back. The skirt will look really loose here, so we're going to need to gather the fabric to fit the bodice. This does take a while, but all you need to do is gather each section as even as possible and use your fingers to push the gathers around.
So this is what it looks like after I've gathered and pinned the seams together. Now all we need to do is just sew this down and finish the seam. I like to finish my seam with overlocker, but you can use a zigzag stitch or pinking shears. You can really see how neat the insides look, so if you pull the dress right side out, the gathering looks pretty neat and the dress is nearly finished. Now we're going to sew the ruffle piece and pin and stitch along the side seams. Once this is sewn, pick which edge you want to be the bottom and double fold the hem by half an inch. You'll want to press this along the entire ruffled hem. As you can see, I've pressed the hem down and I like to use pins to secure it so it's ready for stitching. Here you can see the hem is done on the ruffle. Now we're going to do the same method as before and gather the ruffle to the skirt. So I've sewn a line of gathering stitches along the whole top of the ruffle. And now we're going to want to pin the right sides together of the skirt and the ruffle at the side seams and gather the whole ruffle. Here is what the gathering should look like along the ruffle, which is pinned to the skirt. It takes a bit of time to do the whole thing but it's nearly finished, so all we have to do now is just sew and finish the seam. Here is the finished ruffle. It looks so clean from the inside and now the whole dress is completed. Let's take a look at how this turned out.
I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved putting this together and I've had such great feedback from sewists that have loved making this dress. You can find this pattern over on my Etsy shop, Tammy Handmade Studio, which is linked in the description box below.